Art by day, magic by night. Chinese culture is celebrated in St. Louis's first Lantern Festival. That's our topic next on City Corner. I'm Steve Potter and welcome to City Corner. A one-of-a-kind exhibition could be found at the Missouri Botanical Garden in St. Louis, Lantern Festival, Art by Day, Magic by Night. Lynn Kirkemeyer of the Garden joins us here to tell us more about it. Hi, Lynn, welcome Hi, to the show. Hi, Steve, thanks for having us. We're always so glad to be here to chat about what's new at the Garden. What, would this be like the 10th year in a row for you? <laughs> I, yes, and, well, I, probably pretty close to that, yeah. <laughs> Art by Day, Magic by Night, what does that mean? Well, the Chinese lantern exhibit that we have is beautiful pieces of art um, that were handcrafted here in St. Louis by artisans using old traditional methods. And it's included with garden admission for anyone to see during the day. And at night when it's dark, the lights come on and that's when the magic really happens. Now this is not only a first of its kind exhibition for St. Louis, but for the entire country? Yes, actually um, a lantern festival that is traditional in nature and large like ours is, has never been done in the United States to our knowledge. We've done a lot of research and couldn't find another lantern festival except some that maybe had little lanterns like this. But that's not what we're talking about. No, we're not. That is not, that's what people think. That's what people have on their back porch. That's exactly right. We <laughs> all think, that was what I thought of when I heard of a lantern festival. But these are building size um, lanterns that are made out of silk and steel. And some are our tallest, I think, is about four stories tall. Well, let's take a look at the first thing people see mm -hmm at the entrance to the Missouri Botanical Garden. Okay. And in fact, when you're getting ready for the exhibit, I had a lot of people talk to me, did you see this thing on the parking know. lot? Yeah. That's our welcoming dragon. Um, it's about a half a football field in length. Um, and the first night we were testing the lights back in April, cars were literally stopped. Oh, that's the Heavenly Temple. And that's about four stories tall um, in the middle of the garden and all handcrafted here on the garden grounds. Okay. Before we see any more, let me ask you, these, these lantern festivals, they go back in, the, in the oh, oh, thousands of years, Thousands right? of years in China. It's a long-standing tradition, and there's many um, stories behind what that tradition really means, but they're typically held in China during the Chinese New Year to celebrate family, community, and prosperity, mm -hmm. um, looking forward into the New Year. So about two to three weeks in, February into March. So each lantern, and when I say lantern, could you call it an exhibit? It is an exhibit. So each set, there's lantern set. sets. We have 26 lantern sets. Um, and each set could be made up of a, a hundred lanterns or mm -hmm. more, depending on the, the set. And each each individual set has a particular meaning also. Yes, or they're, they're um, legend or myth um, that has some connection to the garden. Um, or it's um, traditional Chinese um, uh, lantern like the Heavenly Temple that has a great significance in Chinese culture. Well, is it important for uh, me as an individual going there and looking, do I need to know the history beside, behind each set? You don't because we tell you. We'll give you that information um, at each of the sets. There's a story about that set and as well um, a little snippet about it in the guidebook that we give everyone. Uh, well, Lynn, you, you said that these were all, all these sets were made here at yes, the garden. Yes. But you actually had artisans. Yes, that's part of it. From the old country. Yeah. <laughs> come here and do it. To talk a little bit about that because that's fascinating. Yeah, th it's been quite an operation to try to figure out all of the details and get all of these um, skilled artisans here to the garden. They build these lantern sets all over Asia. Um, primarily for various celebrations. Um, and so they came, we had 33 um, skilled artisans who were building these um, on the grounds you here You brought the them from China? Brought them from China, got their visas. We have a chef that feed, fed them four meals a day um, because, you know, they were working um, very hard. 
Um, they didn't want toasted ravioli? Or no, what? no, they wanted their own food. <laughs> and we actually brought a, a ton of rice over from um, their homeland. And when you say a ton, you mean literally a literally ton? Literally a ton, yes, which was something that I was very concerned about getting it through. I mean, every acronym, acronym you know, the USDA, the FDA, Homeland Security, Customs and Border Patrol, we had to um, interface with all of those governmental agencies in order to get that, that rice approved. Well, uh, why Lynn go to all that trouble to bring these people over? Couldn't they have just sent directions and had people no. do it here? <laughs> Actually, no. Um, it, it, it's amazing to watch the way they worked. Uh, we got a book of plans, technical plans that were about this big, um, about a year out. <clears throat> and then when they come, they actually draw the art, the piece that you're gonna see on the concrete. They freehand draw it in chalk. And then they start to um, form the, the steel onto that drawing on the ground first, and then they build it up from there. So it would be a lot of learning for someone here to, to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Well, we have some behind the scenes yeah. pictures of these Chinese artisans at the Missouri Botanical okay. Garden putting mm -hmm. these, um, these sets together. Yes. Why don't we look at them okay. and you can tell us what we're seeing. All that's right. not it. Well, that's one of the chillin'. That's made of medicine bottles. That's another piece, the um, blissful wedding, because we have lots of weddings at the garden. All right, let's see if we can get those images of the artisans actually working. We've got about six of those, the artisans mm -hmm. working on these sets. And how long were they here and how long did they do that? They, oh, here we go. They arrived Easter Sunday, and this is um, a young woman who's actually applying the silk to the steel infrastructure. I was calling her a silker, but her technical term is a skinner. So those ladies um, glued that all on. And here you can see the actual chalk drawing of the lantern on the ground. Um, before the steel is bent. And every single lantern, every piece in each set was started out its life that way. That's the four-faced Buddha um, actually being lifted into place outside the climatron. So we had to have cranes on the grounds doing that. And again, those were all uh, crafted first um, out on the parking lot. That's the silkers again who are finishing up the silk on these masks that are hanging in the Monsanto Hall, the Chinese opera masks. And there they are some, doing some more of the silking on one of the pieces. That's, um, they rip that silk by hand and then they fine tune it. This is amazing. This is the porcelain dragon piece, part of that. Every single piece is hand tied together using kite string. Not a bit of glue is used at all. And then each of those individual pieces was hand tied onto the steel infrastructure in place. Two gentlemen did all of that tying. No kidding. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, I know I talked to you, what was it a couple of months ago? Mm -hmm. We talked about this uh, when these artisans were still in town. Yeah. And I was curious about uh, how they spent their downtime here in St. Louis because not only was this a pretty interesting experience for you at the garden, yes. but it had to have been for them too because I think you told me most of them or all of them had never been to this country no, before. No, they'd never been to this country before. Um, and the one thing they wanted to do was shop. You know, I was trying to set up tours. They went to the brewery, you know, over to the Arch, of course. They had to see the Mississippi River while they were in the United States. I was not allowing that to go by mm -hmm. without um, happening. But really, they wanted to shop because things in the United States are less expensive for, um, than they are in China for them to buy. Yeah. So that was really an eye-opener for me. Did you go shopping with them? Or? Uh, no, unfortunately, I was working nonstop, mm -hmm. as were they most of the time that they were here. Um, so we had a wonderful uh, folks in the Chinese community here. Did any of them speak English? Was there a uh, no. language barrier? Mm -hmm. And how'd you handle that? Terrible language barrier. They have an interpreter that came over with, um, with them. And the owners of the company that we worked with to do this exhibit both speak English fluently. So there were three people who could speak with the uh, artisans and there was a lot of pointing, especially when we had a storm <laughs> and we wanted them out of the rain, out of the lightning and that was a, a bit of a rush trying to get uh -huh. them to understand. What kind of feedback did you get from them about their experience here? They really had a great time. They thought the folks were very kind. Um, you know, we tried to le learn a couple of words. Um, ni hao, <laughs> so how are you, um, and those kinds of things, and she she, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they were very focused on their work. Yeah. 
Uh, we've got more images to look at, which we'll do in the second half of the mm -hmm. program, look at more of these sets. But uh, so you have these massive sets built out of silk and steel and in some cases porcelain. Yes. And I guess they're temporary. They are temporary because over time the silk will um, react to the sun even though it's been treated. Um, it'll begin to fray and, and um, fade. Um, so yeah, it is temporary. And when it's all said and done, everything will be recycled unless um, there's another institution that wants to get the, in, the steel infrastructure and maybe mm -hmm. do, do something with the sets afterwards. Well, when the Lantern Festival opened, you had, a, you had a big celebration, including a parade and I think a dancing dragon. How'd that go? Oh, that was great. And that actually is part of our normal Chinese culture days that we do every year at the garden. Um, and we just moved it to Memorial Day weekend this year and expanded it to three days to kind of celebrate the opening of this Chinese exhibit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So people love the dragon dance. It's a wonderful uh, component of the festival. What's been the reaction so far? It's been open for a while now. Uh, what's what's been the public reaction? Oh to my it? gosh, it's been incredible. I was worried. You know, any time you do something new or different that you hadn't done before and that people don't know anything about, mm -hmm. they might be you know reticent. We have had rave reviews. Absolutely rave reviews. People are writing us thank you notes about what a wonderful experience coming to the Lanterns was, that they'd never seen anything like it. It was awe-inspiring, and nobody's really complaining. So that's a good thing. That's you don't a good thing. You usually get complaints at the Botanical Garden, do you? Oh, people love... I can't love, believe that. You know, and we, we really um, appreciate when people tell us their concerns because the public loves the Botanical Garden. It's very dear to them. And so when they have an opinion about it, we really listen. I've never seen anything to complain about. But. Well, you know, people don't like stuff in their garden. So that was my first worry with the Chinese Lantern <laughs> Festival. Yeah. Well, we're going to pick up uh, on this in just a couple of minutes. We're talking with Lynn Kirkemeyer from the Missouri Botanical Garden about the Lantern Festival. And we'll be back right after this. I'm Steve Potter and welcome back to City Corner. We're talking about the Lantern Festival at the Missouri Botanical Garden, which is running through August the 18th. Lynn Kirkemeyer is here. Art by day, magic by night. And just to recap, uh, Lynn, you had uh, Chinese artisans mm -hmm. come to the United States, the Missouri Botanical Garden, and actually construct in what, are, in some cases, what are very large sets. Correct. That's correct. 33 artisans. They were here about seven weeks. And some of the sets are four stories long, tall. And Very they're beautiful tight. by day or night, but they're mm -hmm. illuminated at night, which sort of gives yes. them a whole different look. It's, it's incredible to see them lit at night. It's breathtaking. And of course, we saw this earlier. This yes. is what you see when you come mm -hmm. into the garden, right? Yep, that's the welcoming dragon. And again, give us an idea of the, the scale of that thing. Half a football field long, so it's, it's massive um, and really um, incredible. People just can't, it's like a magnet. They're drawn to it. Now, you made the point, too, that uh, these Lantern Festivals, this is the first time this has ever been done in the United States, which I think is incredible. Mm -hmm. But uh, the tradition goes back thousands of years in China. And I guess originally they must have been lit with, with uh, lit candles. Yes, they, they had um, Did I make up a word, lit? Yeah. Lit with candles. <laughs> lit with candles. Yes, they were. <laughs> and um, one of the legends is that um, there was a marauding army coming in, and they lit all of these lanterns to make it seem like the town was full of people and other armies to scare the bad guys away. But there are many, many lan uh, lantern legends. And they still do that to this day in they China. They still do it to this and day. Didn't you go over there to take I a look? I did, yes. I went to Zigong, which is the lantern um, capital of China, and it's in the Sichuan province. So it took me about 30 hours altogether to get there from St. Louis, and it was fascinating. And we have a huge lantern festival, 26 sets, 
but there the sets are, the, like their forest park is filled with hundreds of sets. The streets, the highways lined with them. Every hotel has one. It's incredible. This year is the year of the dragon, which we're really excited about. So it's sort of like our Christmas displays, you know, where people line up to drive through the Christmas displays yes. in the parks and yes. things, sort of like mm -hmm. that? Uh, yeah, that's a really good um, analysis. Yeah. yeah, yeah, our analogy, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're both making <laughs> up words today. It's morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's um, take a look at some of these images and take your time and uh, tell me what you can about it. And if, if you know oh. anything about the legend behind the yes. sets we're looking mm -hmm. at, please share this that. This is Butterfly Love. And of course, one of our sister institutions, a part of the garden is the Butterfly House. And so we had to have something that paid tribute to that. And this is the Romeo and Juliet of China. Um, they, they're they're star-crossed lovers. Um, and they also uh, committed suicide like Romeo and Juliet um, because of their the love that they could not um, partake in and became, they became butterflies when they died. This is the double seventh moon festival, which typically play, takes place during the summer. And again, it's about uh, two lovers um, that weren't able to connect in life. And once a year, the stars align in the Milky Way, Mo uh, magpies fly up to heaven and form an arch that they can cross over and be together one night. Okay, before we look at any more, are these things that you just walk by? Can you walk around them? You walk by them. Um, they're quite large. They take up a lot of space. Um, so you're, and they're meant to be viewed from a distance because they are so large. Uh -huh. So we've identified pathways that you walked and view from. And they're, they're wiring and that kind of thing. So we wanna keep people safe. Right, and, but the Botanical Garden has a long history working with China. Oh, absolutely. And that's really the reason why we're doing this, because we have been working with China. We're the Western lead for Europe and North America on documenting all of the flora of China, the native plants. So we have, or not native, wild plants, there's a difference. We've documented 31,500 plants over the course of 25 years. And that particular um, project is ending, will be wrapped up at the end of this year, start of next year, 25 volumes. Well, what is the difference between wild and native? Well, you'd have to ask so a botanist for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they are different. They're growing in the wild, they're not cultivated. Uh -huh. oh, um, and you know, um, now we are all starting to be more and more attuned to um, healing methods from all over the world and plants play a very important part in all of healing. Um, so that's the power of plants that we the garden is really focused on from a scientific and research um, perspective. Um, I, I th that's the part of the garden that most St. Louisans don't know about. And I think we should take tremendous pride in the fact that our institution, the Missouri Botanical Garden, here in St. Louis is taking the lead of the Western team. That means the gardens and the scientific um, operations in Europe, Harvard, the Smithsonian, all of these other institutions are a part of our team and we're the lead. You know, if you think that every city has something equivalent to the Missouri Botanical Garden. No, they don't. No, no, oh no, no. We're considered one of the top three botanical institutions in the entire world. Um, New York and Kew are the two others that we share that, um, share with pride, that kind of um, accolade. But we really are taking the lead in identifying and documenting all plant life on Earth. In fact, we're getting ready to do that for the entire world. Hmm. Let's take a look at some more images, some more pictures from the Lantern Festival to Missouri Botanical Garden. And Lynn Kirkemeyer can tell us a little bit about what these sets mean. Oh, that is the Emperor's Quest for Immortality. He traveled the world, much like the garden scientists, um, documenting kinds of um, elixirs that would give him, um, you know, he would never die. And so this documents his uh, travels in order to, to find the elixir of life, which he never did, of course. Yeah, let me know about that. Yeah. <laughs> when you get to the bottom of the elixir. Yes. That's, this is one of my favorites, um, Jing Tang Gong Fishing. Um, and this is an um, advisor who wanted to overthrow one of the um, governments in China. And it took him 72 years. And his whole philosophy, he was a great fisherman, is that patience was important. And that if you were patient enough, the fish would come to you. You wouldn't have to go to them to, mm -hmm. to catch them. And he did, was finally successful in overthrowing. Okay. Before we go to the next one, um, Lynn, you said you had 27? 26 sets. 26 sets. Mm -hmm. Potentially, how many could there be? 
I mean, how many legends are there? Oh my gosh, you could go on forever. I, you, it could, <laughs> you could fill the garden with different sets, but we tried to pick things that had some um, symbolism or connection to the garden as much as we could. Have you learned anything about the Chinese community in St. Louis through all this? Yes, well, we've been working with them for many years with our Chinese culture days and our Chinese garden. You know, St. Louis, again, something to be very proud of, was the first city in the United States to have an official sister city relationship with China. Really? Yes, Nanjing is our sister city, and we have a garden that's uh, you know dedicated to that. Um, so we've been celebrating the Chinese community for many years, um, and they've been wonderful to work with. Well, I would think Chinese people that live in St. Louis now would would really appreciate this. They do. They're very proud of the celebration, and in fact, we're having um, in a couple of weeks. Um, People who have adopted children from China from all over the United States are coming to be a part of this. Let's spend a minute and take a look at some of the things you brought here today. Oh, yeah. You've got a coloring mm -hmm. book and an um, what's that? Well, this is an umbrella and it shades people from the um, sun, of course. That's very important. We could in China. be using that we here in St. Louis. Yes, uh -huh. yes. We have used it a lot this <laughs> summer. And then Mercy Hospital helped us to develop this coloring book, which the Chinese community actually asked us to do because they, um, so many of the children um, from China um, who've been adopted in the States would really appreciate this. So um, we were helped get this um, going. And that has the lantern sets in it. And then of course we have a solar lantern, typical of what we think of as lanterns uh -huh. that uh, people can use. And what is a this? Lovely jacket. Um, that they're flying off the shelves that um, oh, you're are actually selling these are you? we're selling these in at the garden gate shop we also have artisans from China who are living here and who are doing traditional um, um, art forms they're doing uh, silk embroidery um, straw um, plating which makes um, photo or pictures that you can hang on your wall um, some seal engraving, all kinds of really incredible craftsmanship that people can also buy. Mm, it's really beautiful. It is beautiful, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Why don't we take a look? I think we have three more pictures from the okay. Lantern Festival at the Missouri Botanical Garden. And these are sets that are magic by day. No, art by art day. By day. <laughs> I got that backwards. Art by day, magic by night. Magic. Oh, this is one of my favorites. This is the Lotus Ponds. This is in our Gladney Rose Garden. Um, and it's a beautiful vase with the lotus flower, which of course is very important in um, Asian culture. Okay. Yeah. This is one of the nine dragon wall, which is incredible. It's um, a, the life-size replica of a wall that's in China. Um, and these dragons at night move ever so slightly. They move. They move, and it's, it's really, fascinating, people don't realize it, and then all of a sudden, they see it. Of course, you ha have to have terracotta warriors, so we have um, a couple of them um, welcoming guests as they walk in on our Linnean Plaza. Mm. It's beautiful. Yeah, it really is. That one is Apsaris. And you can, that's a view that's down our, one of our pathways. So archways are really important as for lantern festivals. So these arch over the pathway. And in the distance, you see the four-faced Buddha, which is right next to the climate. Then I almost think that it'd be worth like going a couple of times. It might be neat seeing these things in the daytime and then going back and seeing them another time in the evening. Well, and that's kind of how we structured our evening events. So it starts at six so that you can come early see all of the um, lanterns during the day. We have a couple of shows. We have an acrobat show and a sand drawing artist um, who are performing during the evening, earlier in the evening before it gets dark. The lights come on at eight o'clock, whether it's dark or not, and then they become more brilliant as the sun sets. I know people can have, uh, you can book it for private events also? Yes, there are, we have a couple of spaces that you can book for private events um, during the Lantern Festival, and then if you wanna have the garden all to yourself Monday and Tuesday nights. We'll have some contact information come up at the end of the program. Anything mm -hmm. you wanna say about getting tickets, what, what do you recommend? Um, online is pretty much, is the fastest way to do things. If you walk up with your online tickets, we uh, will get you through some lines uh, um, more quickly. They are, we are limited because we only allow so many people in the garden at night for this, so um, there, we haven't hit our limit yet, but we anticipate that happening. A couple of things I just want to rem remind people in the last few seconds we have, you have, you mentioned it earlier, Japanese festival coming up the first yep. couple of days of September. Yes. The Iris Sale, yep. September 8th through 9th. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, daily sale is very popular, September 15th. Yes, it's your chance to get some wonderful plants for your, your garden at home. Also, you're doing something you did last year where you're going to have a seminar to teach people how to climb trees. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we started that last year. People loved it. So it's uh, with harnesses and it's a really fun um, opportunity to get up and see the garden from a bird's eye view. And the end of September, uh, helping people live green? Yes, the Healthy You, Healthy Planet. Um, that happens um, end of September. And it just um, all kinds of vendors who are showing you about the green um, industry and there's music and it's a fun atmosphere and that's included with garden admission. Well, there's always a lot going on at the mm -hmm. Missouri Botanical Garden and the best thing to do is go to your website yes, and take a look at all this because it's, it. yeah. it's a lot. It is. Well, the Lantern Festival runs through August the 18th. And 19th. We, uh, August the 19th. 19th. Yep. I cut it off a day early. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, because we need everybody to come. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Kirkemeyer, thanks so much for coming back thanks, this Steve. year again and telling us about the exciting stuff at the Missouri Botanical Garden. I appreciate it. The Lantern Festival. I'm Steve Potter. That's all we have time for in this edition of City Corner. Thanks for watching and join us next time.